back where you come from. So uh, who's an expert here on program logic? Who knows anything about pro program logic? Cool. Um, so um, essentially, uh, I, I think there's a very good distinction between the green and the purple. Yeah? So in the green, you're talking about all the stuff you do, the programs you run. In the purple, you're talking about what happens to people as outcomes. So the green stuff is outputs, the purple stuff is outcomes. And I think that's really very, very important when we're talking about our religious programs. So most of us tend to talk fairly comfortably in the green space, but in terms of being really lucid about the purple stuff, the short-term outcomes I'm looking for, the medium-term outcomes, and the long-term outcomes, and then of course the metrics that um, you would associate with those outcomes. How do I know, how will I know, how will we know that we've been successful in these endeavours? Um, so um, what I want you to do, what I would like to invite you to do, is I put the three XE shifts in that middle box on the left-hand side, just a little <coughs> summary of them there. And then on the right-hand side, I've just put something around learning sprints. Um, and the idea here is, if you haven't done learning sprints, just hands up again who might have done learning sprints. You know, it's around the place at the moment, about half. You can't do everything. So you choose something that you can do for a short burst in a particular area. And I think that's helpful in the religious space because you can feel overwhelmed. Yeah? But you choose something specific and um, you move through those processes here. The final row in that middle table is drawn from the religious dimensions document. The religious life there is constructed as praying, learning, celebrating, belonging, reaching out. So different areas of school life where you could potentially um, you know, highlight an action or an intervention of some sort, go for it in a, a sprint type of way and be clear about the metric, how will I know uh, you've been successful um, and uh, then do that for a term maybe. Or how many weeks is good? Um, four. four, you know. So it's, it's not a marathon, it's not even middle distance. I suppose a term is a long time, middle distance. Four weeks, you know, is the idea here with the sprint. Um, and you can see some change, I guess this is short term or whatever, but over um, a series of sprints, you're starting to create a plot, aren't you, for the novel that is your Catholic school narrative, you know. It's got lots of chapters in it. Um, you try and do everything at once or just feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of this stuff, you won't do anything. So, can you identify something just quietly for a moment and, and write it down um, that your place is doing at the moment that could be relevant to one of those three shifts? Um, or it might be uh, something that um, is a particular issue in your place religiously that isn't caught uh, by those three shifts. Um, and then just move through the elements there. Um, just briefly describe the action. But when you're describing the action, be aware you're in that green space in the um, program logic. Um, we can be very busy doing green things the question you've got to ask yourself is, does it lead to anything purple? You know? It's one thing to say, this is the program we ran and a lot of people came along and they clapped their hands at the end and people liked the food, maybe like this conference. Um, so we got our people to come along. Uh, hopefully you did like the food. But the more important thing is, yes, okay, we ran it. It ran smoothly according to plan. People showed up, etc. cetera. Um, but what are the outcomes? So. Essentially, the first thing there is to, in a green way, describe what you did. The second one is, how would you describe the outcomes moving from green to purple in row one to two there? Um, describe the action green, the outcome is purple, and the final one is, what metrics would you use, are you using to um, be successful, uh, to understand whether it's worked or not? Just a few moments to, to uh, A, think of something in the life of your school and just uh, write a few things down for it. Um, if we can share some of these things with each other. Um, now, um, 
what I'm doing here is just proposing a way to translate the ECSI research into lived practice. And if you take an appreciative inquiry approach, uh, you do so on the basis that this is already happening in our schools. People are Catholic educators, they've been doing this forever. When they get an analysis like the ECSI analysis, when you get reports, that informs your practice. It's already happening. So if you prove that in a sense by asking people to do this exercise. They describe something in the life of their school and you identify the ways in which it's shaping uh, your current practice, etc. Does anyone want to um, just take this microphone and share with us what you, uh, an initiative that you described, uh, just so we can get a sense of, well, what was it? But don't actually tell us forever what it was because we we'll catch up with you over lunch uh, about that. Uh, maybe over tea as well if it's a long story. Um, but briefly what it was and essentially um, what's the outcome you're looking for and what was the metric that you associated with that. So um, just uh, anyone at all uh, want to start us off and we'll just get two or three of these just to get us uh, across the various parts of school life that people are working on, what your outcome in mind is, how you sort of trying to make that outcome happen and what the metric is you're using uh, to know whether it's happening or not. You, you aren't doing anything good at the moment, are you? Yeah, we're, we're involved in something together, so uh, we had a little discussion and it's really handy to prime the pump just if someone starts anyway, so um, thank you. We haven't actually got any hard, firm data yet, but we're just in the process. Um, I'm part of a two-school parish and our parish schools, in conjunction with some other um, local Catholic primary schools, are working out at the parish of Surrey Hills with um, Paul on a, an engagement strategy for young people. And so at the moment we're um, taking little focus groups and we're doing a little bit of an appreciative inquiry process, looking at ways, hearing the voices of the young people and their parents and um, other parishioners in the um, parish and looking at ways that we can engage young people because we, we need to refocus our directions and our attempts. How beautiful. Um, if I said to you, what metric might um What's the outcome you want? I suppose it's around engagement. You've used that word. Mm. And how will you know whether this has been um, successful in the sense of achieving what you'd hoped for? Do you have any sense what you might be looking for? Well, I suppose we're, we're probably going to be prompted by the answers that are provided. Um, and we're hoping that... Um, that those answers are going to provide us with some sort of encouraging attitudes towards um, their, what they feel they can give life to their parish or to, to the church um, and future hopes um, and how we can harness that and find ways to do that meaningfully. That's such a cool answer um, because um, I guess if you knew ahead of time what you wanted it to look like, it would be the yellow slice, yeah? You know, because I already know what Catholic is and what I'm looking for. But if I'm in the purple space, I'm waiting for you to share with me what your understanding is and together we'll see where that takes us, you know? So if you're in the yellow space, you already know where it's going. You're going to impose it in a sense. But if you're in the purple space, it's co-created. So you don't know where it's going to take you just yet. So you haven't had the conversation, yeah. So at our school, our big focus has been on the shift from Christian values education and moving that into the recontextualisation. And so our focus has been on the pedagogy of encounter, which we're getting quite good at. However, now we're further exploring the aspect of what the church teaches and looking, if you pull that one back, and looking at the different ways we can explore the, what the church teaches. Um, I found 
of really needing to upskill staff with scripture, but it's not just scripture. I need to remember to look at all aspects. Sacred te text and scripture is one part, but then there's other parts that we need to be upskilled and be able to explore as well. Yeah, but this is a sprint, right? So you can start in one area. And, and that's why we're looking at, yeah, the, what the church teaches. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just get a few of these and um, uh, get a sense of the diversity of approaches. Hi, I'm Mary and Claire and I are at Edmund Rice School and um, we filter everything through our Edmund Rice touchstones of um, gospel spirituality, um, liberating education, justice and solidarity and inclusive community. And we also do project-based learning. So we start with an entry event and then we work through um, with the students um, benchmarks and through the benchmarks we can incorporate some of that wonderful um, you know, um, recontextualisation and making sure that they are um, ticking off along the way, that we've covered everything. And we all lead to a culminating event and that's that um, end here where we're connecting with community and presenting their findings in some way. And we've had some really powerful units of work and, and then it, we've invited parents, community members and they present in different ways. So it's been, it's, it's a work in progress but it's some powerful things happening. Well, boys are owning and and um, really being proud and uh, presenting with enthusiasm and recalling back in their reflections, um, you know, where they would take that next, and that's um and and then the way they're engaging in our uh, liturgical celebrations then after that, and yeah, so we've got some good things happening. Thank you. Um, is this like the only good part of the room, or if I went over there, could I um, could I have some uh, some people who can just uh, just help us there? We've not got a long time, but I don't want an impression to be created that this is the good side of the room, and this 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 middle area here hasn't got anything uh, going on. So, someone would like to uh, share something with us as to something that you're working on. Um, do you mind just passing that across? Thank you. Um, this is both coming from a primary school perspective and also in collaboration with the student wellbeing. So our primary school has an initiative that we refer to as kind words and kind actions. And we can see that permeating through our awards and through our circle time and through our SEL lessons. But I suppose mine is more of a, <coughs> a reflection of as this initiative is moving and constantly moving a little bit quicker and gathering steam, this has provided a really good opportunity for me to reflect and think, well, have we as a school really specifically, explicitly named this as Catholic? And I think honestly at this stage, I need to probably have a conversation about we need to name it more or more often so that our students, as they are changing their behaviours and, and are reflecting on their impact upon others, that we're naming it and looking for values that are scriptural to underpin what it's up to. So I suppose I don't actually have any metrics yet. I'm probably now looking at, well, what would they be that would be, from a Catholic perspective, as well as a well-being perspective. So it's really, yeah, it's not like you don't like the well-being stuff here, you want that to be there, but you're beginning to look for specific expressions of the well-being that you want to be transforming that, not in a kind of tokenistic, um, I like to talk about that Catholic cake, you know? There's a difference between a secular cake that's in Catholic ice, you know? Mm. One more before we finish off. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, something, a process that we've engaged in uh, at our school that we found really beneficial. Um, we sort of believe that you have to start with self, like with our staff particularly, trying in terms of staff formation. So we wrote a school narrative. We've done this over quite a number of years. Um, so it was a uh, process that all the staff were involved in. And um, so we wrote a school narrative, so who are we in our context? Um, and from that school narrative, we designed an ethical framework. And the ethical framework has uh, a few different um, sections to it, but one of it is RE. And so it's, well, who am I as a person of faith? So over a number of years now, we've really helped our teachers to really um, explore their own faith, where they are in their faith. And of course, they're everywhere. They're, there's a, a really wide... Um, uh, and so who am I as a person of faith and really trying to understand self so that they can better, you know, teach the children and, um, and model it for the children. Now, last year we started that the children wrote the school narrative in their own language and the children have now got their own ethical framework and we're trying to help the children understand faith. Like, what do they understand? Who is God and what is Catholic and what does it mean to go to a Catholic school and... Um, so trying to, we work in small groups with them, um, just trying to uh, understand, help the teachers and the children sort of start from self. Well, what, what does it mean to, for me? You know, what does it mean for me to be a, a teacher in a Catholic school and how can I help children make meaning um, of uh, being a, 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 a person in a Catholic school? Uh, well, I guess we're looking for um, more meaningful conversation, uh, in more meaningful engagement from the students, um, more that they would want to come to celebrate, to our celebrations that we celebrate at school, uh, not because they have to, but because it has some form of uh, meaning for them. Um, so I guess a deeper understanding of self so that you can then be for others, I guess. Um, in terms of, it's all under Catholic. You know, who is this person of God and what does he mean for me in my life? Thank you. So it's great to hear some of that great practice that's going on. And I think, as Paul said, those appreciative inquiries, knowing that we, we are already starting from a good spot and we can always get better. So um, I'm going to hand it over to somebody else just to say thank you to Paul for the, the session today. Thanks, Pauline. On behalf of everyone here, Paul, we would like to thank you very, very much. It's been a wonderful opportunity to reflect on the responses that we now need to make. As, as you said, for the last decade, we've spent a lot of time analysing things, but we really have to look at how are we making the connections for our students and being um, very explicit in what we're doing so that we are prepared proud to profess our faith and that we don't make apologies for that, that in our caring and loving and sharing and everything else, that they see Jesus as the centre of our faith. So thank you very, very much. I certainly are going away with a few more challenges and things, but having just listened to other people, in a way, it's what challenges us that makes us move forward. And I think in these times, more than ever, we do need the opportunity to be very clear about what we believe in. And I do think having done the data and having staff and students involved, it gives us something to talk about so that then we can reflect on why we do these things as well. So thank you very, very much for a great presentation today.